2024-2025, right honorable speaker, as external finance for parliamentary appropriation. This poses risk of potential duplication of budgets. Right honorable speaker, the committee observed on race, raising the budget ceiling for UA that over time, UA has demonstrated capacity to collect its projected non-tax revenue. In the financial 2022-2023, UA collected 128.975 millions and made a surplus of 34 billion a surplus of 34 billion currently saved on its wildlife fund in the financial 2024-2025 right honorable speaker and colleagues ua has been allocated 81.433 billion as proposed in this ministerial policy statement yet it has projected to collect 182.36 billion in addition to the non-tax revenue surplus saved from financial 2022-2023. With uh, Uganda shillings 81.43 billion, UWA will only cover wage-related expenses for its 3,200 staff. UWA spends 62.2 billion on wage, uh, gratuity, NSF, and medical. The outstanding balance will cover part of the fixed operation cost, right honorable speaker. The committee notes that whereas UWA spends a source at source, in line with the Uganda Wildlife Act 2019, it ex its expenditure must be within the appropriated selling. We therefore recommend as a committee that Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife, Antiquities should incorporate all expected external finance in its annual budget proposal for consideration and final appropriation by Parliament. The committee further recommends that government should raise budget selling for Uganda Wildlife Authority to Uganda shillings 167 0.36 billion to allow for utilization of funds internally generated by OA and access to funds already saved as supplies on the wildlife fund, Mr. Speaker and honorable colleagues. On page 35, re redistribution of OA non-tax revenue. The committee observed that OA non-tax revenue realized Uganda shillings 34 billion surplus, which was saved on the wildlife fund. The committee is cognizant of the fact that Tourism development agencies have a symbiotic relationship with OA, and there is need to support other entities within the program that have critical and funded priorities. We therefore recommend, right honorable speaker, that Uganda shillings 15 billion should be internally reallocated from OA Wildlife Authority to cater for unfunded priorities at OWEC, Uganda Wildlife Research Training Institute, and U2B as per the reallocation table 9 and 10. Then Uganda Wildlife Education Center, the committee noted that OWEC presented a proposal to increase the population of lions in national game parks through breeding. Consequently, a budgetary proposal of seven billion for in-situ lion breeding with a targeted output of only 16, 16 lions to be bred in a year was presented. The committee, however, honorable speaker, observed that whereas the proposal is quite innovative, the proposed return on investment was low. Right Honorable Speaker, the committee further noted that both OWA and OWEC submitted budgets for environmental impact assessment that cost 280 million Uganda shillings and 500 million respectively, respectively for lion breeding. The committee, however, observed that it was OWEC alone that had the mandate of breeding lions within the vicinities managed by OWA. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, we recommend that OWEC should review its feasibility study and conduct benchmarks on the return on investment on in-situ lion breeding and present it uh, for recommendation during the next budget cycle for financial year 2025-2026. Additionally, we recommend that OWEC and OWA should harmonize their mandates regarding lion breeding in national game parks and protected areas. Right on a speaker on page 36, 4.4, Uganda Hotel Tourism Training Institute. The committee observed that UHTTI made a total collection of 2.8 billion as non-tax revenue and retained the same on its revenue account. The committee further observed that UHTTI has been spending funds at source, contrary to the section 29 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015. During the meeting of the committee held on Thursday, 21st March, right on the speaker, the principal of UHTTI informed the committee that the institute received authorization from the permanent secretary and secretary to the treasury to spend funds at source. He tabled a letter dated 13th January 2023, authored by the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife, Antiquity, requesting the PSST 
for supplementary budget of 3.8 billion for emergency reallocation of UHTTI to rented premises and establishment of students' accommodation facilities. The committee, however, did not receive evidence of an instrument uh, from the PSST authorizing the principal of UHST to spend at source. The committee observed that this institution illegally held funds on its revenue account beyond one financial year without remitting to the same and the same to the consolidated fund. The committee was privy to the information that management abuse, abuse, I mean management abuse its authority by allowing insider borrowing of money that culminated in a total loan portfolio of Uganda shillings 472 million for the period July 2022 to March 2024. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the committee further observed that this institution was engaged in insider borrowing on page 37 without authorization from any lawful authority. It is, it is straight law, Right Honorable Speaker, that the mandate of borrowing and lending money is a preserve of government. Article 159 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda provides that the power to borrow and lend money is for the government. Further, Section 36 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015, right honourable speaker and colleagues, provides for authority to raise uh, authority to raise loans. It is specifically provides that on page 37, it provides as elaborated in the statement of the committee, right honourable speaker. The recommendation: the committee recommends that UHTTI should desist from the absurd, irregular, and illegal act of insider borrowing as it contravenes Article 159 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, Section 3645 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the committee further recommends that the Directorate of Public Prosecution could investigate, should investigate the actions of the Board of Directors and the principal of UHTTI for actions of insider borrowing from the revenue account of the Institute. Right Honorable Speaker, on page 38, Uganda Wildlife Research Training Institute, which is a subvention, the committee observed that the performance of this institute since its inception in terms of publication of wildlife research findings fell below average, and neither does it depict the name of the institute nor justify the annual budgetary allocation made. The committee was informed by the minister that the poor performance of this institution could be attributed to low staffing levels in the research division of the Uganda Wildlife Research Training Institute due to limited budget allocation to the institute. The committee was further informed that the institute has gone through restructuring exercised by the Ministry of Public Service, which will position it as a center of excellence in wildlife research. However, this will require additional aid billion to run the research institute. We therefore recommend that government should provide additional 8 billion shillings to implement the newly approved structure of this institution. Right Honorable Speaker, on UTB, the committee observed that NDP3 targeted to cumulatively attract 281, 760 international tourist arrivals from US, Europe, and China but only 67,252 arrivals were registered by the end of the financial year 2023-2024. Right Honorable Speaker, the committee was informed that US, Europe, and China were a key target source for leisure tourists who stay longer than business tourists. However, statistics show that in international arrivals from the aforementioned areas have continued to drop. The committee informed UTIB was informed that UTB requires 4.48 billion, 4 billion to engage international and national media, right, Honorable Speaker, for production of positive tourism stories to improve destination perception in light of recent controversies that shed the destination in a bad light. However, this has remained unfunded. We recommend that government should provide 4 billion to UTB to engage on in international and national media houses in production and positive media stories for improved destination image. Right Honorable Speaker, page 39, proposed reallocation. The committee identified 22.404 billion from within the tourism development program and reallocated it to key priority areas within the program. The table below shows table nine, as I earlier on mentioned on page 39, source of funds identified for reallocation. 
that moves to, tab to page 40, and the committee observed that the tourism development program entities are grossly unfunded. The committee was presented with several unfunded priorities. However, the following are considered very critical and should be provided for within the financial year 2024-2025. And the next table on page 41, right on the speaker, table 10, presents destination of identified resources where the committee reallocated this fund to the total tune of uh, right on the speaker, to the total tune of 22 million, 405 million, right, Honorable Speaker. I hope members will be able to read on page 41. Right, Honorable Speaker, the next sector, trade and industry sector. Mr. Speaker, sir, this uh, has, under trade, we have vote 015, which is the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives, then vote 136, Uganda Export Promotion Board, and vote 154, Uganda National Bureau of Standards. Mr. Speaker, sir, I request members that we move on to page, page 45 presents the proposed budget allocations for the financial year 2024-2025, table 12. I hope members will be able to read through. I will just give a summary. Financial year 2024-2025, the ministry has been allocated $2.9 billion for financing its wage and $101.21 billion for non-wage recurring expenditures. The budget for development domestic stands at Uganda shillings 11.16 billion. The total budget has dropped by 54.725 billion from Uganda shillings 169.99 billion to Uganda shillings 115.27 billion. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the reduction is largely attributed to one of supplementary budgets to Uganda to Uganda UWRSA to the tune of two billion, then Ministry of Trade to the tune of three billion, then UDC to the tune of fifty point four billion. That was a one off expenditure that uh, led to that big margin of of reduction in the total budget of the ministry, right honorable speaker. The planned activities for the ministries on page 46. Right Honorable Speaker, coming down to page 51. I request members that we move to, to page 54, which talks about uh, Uganda Export Promotion Board. Right Honorable Speaker, Uganda Export Promotion Board is another vote on its own, vote 136. And when you look through on page 54, it presents the semi-annual budget performance. Then on page 54, it presents the proposed budget for the financial 2024-2025. The overall budget for the Export Promotion Board, right honorable speaker and colleagues, is proposed to reduce by Uganda shillings 0.703 billion. The reduction has been affected on the wage component to clear and utilized wage during the financial year 2023-2024. However, slight increment on Uganda, of Uganda shillings 0.3 billion is proposed on the non-wage component. Right Honorable Speaker, the planned activities are there, 6.6 .6 on page 54, and the planned activities runs up to page 56, where we find uh, vote 154, Right Honorable Speaker, for Uganda National Bureau of Standards. UNBS uh, on page 56, Honorable colleagues, you see a table uh, on UNBS semi-annual budget performance, table 16, which I am not going to read because of time, right honorable speaker, and page 57, UNBS half-year physical performance, uh, scrutinized by the committee. Then on page 58, right honorable speaker, is the proposed budget allocation for financial year 2024-2025 and the variance between approved and the proposed right honorable speaker. The proposed budget for UNBS is Uganda shillings 58.142 billion, which is a reduction of Uganda shillings 1.9 billion from the approved, financial, approved budget of financial year 2023-2024. The wage component is expected to remain constant, while non-wage and development budget are proposed to reduce by 0.3 billion, right honorable speaker, and 1.6 billion respectively. The planned activities for the uh, UNBS, that's from page 58, members can read through. Then on page 59, right honorable speaker, is the proposed reallocation for trade and trade and industry financial year 2024-2025.
on table 19, right on the speaker, the committee identified Uganda shillings 35.725 billion from within the trade and industry and reallocated it within the sector key priority areas. The table below, table 19, presents all the details of the source of funds identified for reallocation. Then, right honorable speaker, that runs up to page 60 with a total of uh, 35.7275 billion shillings that was uh, identified and reallocated on page 61, right honorable speaker, on table 20 that members can have time and look through. The committee scrutinized the funded and unfunded priorities for entities under this jurisdiction and was able to identify sources for reallocation and reallocated it accordingly in table 20 based on some projects that were already running on uh, to get completed and few new projects, right honorable speaker. And right honorable speaker, I move now to observation of trade and industry, which is on page 62. Right honorable speaker and colleagues, uh, the committee is concerned that the Ministry of Trade and Industry and Cooperatives was supposed to have operationalized laws such as the Accreditation Service Act 2021 and the Sugar Act 2020. However, none of the two have been operationalized. These laws require operational structures. However, no structures have been proposed in the current rationalization of government agencies, right on the speaker. An implication that they might remain on the shelves, yet they are important to the economy, right on the speaker. We therefore recommend that Ministry of Trade Industry Cooperative should have in place structures to operationalize laws in the trade sector that were passed by this parliament. Right Honorable Speaker, subvention to Uganda Cooperative Alliance, the committee observed that in the financial year 2023-2024, MTIC was allocated $3 billion to, Uganda, to Uganda Cooperative Alliance Limited without a legal framework or a cooperation agreement and, mem or mem and memorandum of understanding to formalize their relationship. Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable colleagues, the committee further observed that Ministry of Trade Industry Cooperative did not have in its possession an instrument legalizing its relationship with, uh, with the institution, UCAL, since UCAL is a limited company. Mr. Speaker, sir, we recommend that the Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Cooperatives and the Attorney General should draft the legal framework to regulate this uh, cooperation in the circumstance, the committee declines to approve Uganda shillings three billion allocated for the financial 2024-2025 to the UCAL through the MTIC until working relationships is properly formalized, right, Honorable Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker, still on page 63, on vote 136, Uganda Export Promotion Board, the committee observed that Uganda Export Promotion Board is mandated to develop and promote Uganda export on the international market. However, little attention has been given to this institution. It lacks a board in addition to limited funding budget resource, resources that are not always fully released in time. For instance, in the financial year 2022-23, Honorable Colleagues, Uganda Export Promotion Board received only $4.46 billion, which was 53% of Uganda shillings $8.42 billion its total annual budget and was the least, and least funded entity of government. UEPB is mandated by Act of Parliament to facilitate the development and growth of export trade in Uganda. The NDP3 highlights export promotion and import substitution as one of country's key development strategies. However, Mr. Speaker, sir and colleagues, the importance of UEPB in promoting exports has not attracted the requ requisite budget allocation. Additionally, poor release of funds has undermined its performance. Uganda Export Promotion Board has unfunded priorities worth $20.66 billion, Mr. Speaker and Honorable Colleagues. The committee therefore recommends that government should expedite the appointment of the Board of Directors of Uganda Export Promotion Board and allocate additional budget of $20.66 billion to Uganda Export Promotion Board to develop exports and discover new markets for Uganda in view of the worsening balance of trade position and the suspension of Uganda from AGOA. Mr. Speaker and honorable colleagues, vote 154, Uganda National Bureau of Standards. The committee reviewed the performance of uh, statistics, performance statistics for UNBS on table 17 and observed that UNBS averagely rated at 72% by half of the financial 
most of the indicators and ac activities geared towards quality assurance and consumers' protection perform below average. This include product and certification protection performed below average. Uh, sorry, this include product and certification permits, equipment verified, equipment calibrated, while market surveillance inspection, which is at the core of consumer protection, registered the worst performance of 36% as in table 17, Mr. Speaker. We therefore recommend that government should open UNBS regional centers and laboratories to bring services closure to the population and to reduce costs of doing business, which would subsequently enhance the entity's performance. Mr. Speaker and colleagues, the committee further recommends that government should allocate adequate funds for salary enhancement for scientists as per the presidential directive. This will enhance performance in this uh, institution, Mr. Speaker, sir. Right Honourable Speaker, Uganda Development Corporation, UDC. The committee observed that UDC operates as a subvention under Ministry of Trade and Industry and Cooperatives. Under the subvention, funds are released to Ministry of Trade Industry Cooperatives, which, is turned, which in turn is transferred, transfers to, to funds to UDC for its operations and investment. The committee noted that UDC accounts for over 60% of the budget appropriated to the ministry, MTIC. Under the current arrangement, UDC is not able to monitor how much, it released, how much is released by the Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development for its operations and monitor and control the fund. The committee is cognizant of the fact that in some instances, UDC has to operate under the market situation, and this may be affected by the lengthy financial release procedures and especially while operating as a subvention. Right on the speaker, the committee further observed that as government of Uganda's investment arm, UDC being, being was, supposed to be, was supposed to ensure that government's shareholding portfolios is business, in business ventures generated return on investments. However, the committee noted that despite recurring investments in businesses such as Commonwealth Resort Munyonyo, Soroti Fruit Factory, Mutuma Tea Factory, Panga Tea Factory, Atiak Sugar Factory, among others, UDC has continued to post losses. The committee further notes that there was no guarantee that allocations to UDC would transform or generate returns of investments. This is evident because at the request of the committee for UDC to share any success stories, profit-making ventures since their inception, none was provided, Mr. Speaker and honorable colleagues. We therefore recommend as a committee that Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development should allocate a vote to UDC as a semi-autonomous government entity. This will enhance accountability, transparency, and effectiveness in management of public resources in all operation of UDC as an investment arm of government of Uganda. Mr. Speaker, sir, page 66, uh, honorable colleagues, management training and advisory services, MTAC. The following are key outputs and activities of uh, MTAC intends to carry out during the financial year 2024-2025. Members can read. The observation, the committee observed that in addition to spending money at source, which is contrary to Section 29 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015, MTAC made substantial transactions at the rev on the revenue account, which was suspicious, irregular, and illegal. Further, the committee was alive to the second budget called Circular of 2022, authored by the PSST to all accounting officers, reminding them of their obligations under the Public Finance Management Act 2015 to desist from spending at source, MTAC decided to ignore such guidance, Mr. Speaker and colleagues. Section 45 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015 requires that an accounting officer shall control the, the, regular, the regularity and proper use of money appropriated to the vote, be responsible for authorizing any commitment made by a vote and control the resources received, held, or disposed of by or an account, on account of a vote. Mr. Speaker, I now proceed on page 67 on general observations and recommendations. And I start with the first one, Mr. Speaker and colleagues. 
expenditure at source outside parliamentary approval. The committee observed that a number of entities under Ministry of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives have, and Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities spend their non-tax revenue at source in contravention of Public Finance Management Act 2015. These entities include MTAC, UNBS and UHTTI. The committee noted with concern that easy accessibility to these funds have led to financial irregularities in these institutions. For instance, UNBS are collected Uganda shilling 64.7 billion non-tax revenue, out of which only Uganda shillings 52.53 billion was transferred to the consolidated fund, and the balance of Uganda shillings 12.14 billion was spent at source. Right on the speaker, procurement of private consultancy services for civil works. The committee observed that the deliberate disregard of the mandate of Ministry of Works and Transport by MDAs and prefer private consultants was a deliberate, was, del, was deliberate, deliberate, sorry, deliberating marvel and raised concerns as to reasons MDAs choose consultants as against Ministry of Works Transport for civil works in is costly, irregular, dubious, suspicious, and encumbers service delivery. Right Honorable Speaker, under the Uganda Public Service Standing Order, the procurement, utilization, and disposal of goods and services in the public sector standing orders is on works, instructs the responsible office, officer to consult the ministry responsible for works before engaging in any works or related activities. Further, Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development issued a procurement policy book 2022 to which the Ministry of Works and Transport was listed as a component authority in executing civil works. Recommendation, the committee recommends that PSST should immediately exercise disciplinary action on all accounting officers who fail to comply with the Public Finance Management Act 2015 on management and remittance of non-tax revenue to the consolidated fund. Right Honorable Speaker and members, the Committee on Tourism, Trade and Industry recommends that Parliament adopts this report and approves budgetary allocation for financial 2024-2025 as indicated in this table where 0.015 Ministry of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives is allocated 114,474 billion, Right Honorable Speaker. Uganda Export Promotion Board, 12,321,175,000, 12 right honorable speaker. UNBS, 64,691,000,000, right honorable speaker. Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities, 173,243,000,000, right honorable speaker and colleagues. Uganda Tourism Board, 28,128,000,000, right honorable speaker. And finally, Uganda Consulate in Kenya, Mombasa, 1.5 billion, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker and honorable colleagues, I beg to report. Thank you, honorable chair. Yes. Colleagues, I open the debate now. Start with the members of the committee, please. I don't... Uh, Europa, I will come to you a bit later. Yes. I'll do Honorable Mede. Honorable Kavanda is already on the microphone. <laughs> he has smuggled himself to the microphone. So let us first sort this problem of Honorable Kavanda. We go to Honorable uh, Amede. We go to Solomon. We go to the three colleagues. Then I come here. In fact, uh, colleagues, stand up. I, I see the ones who are there. Yeah. Okay, I have a Kabanda one, I made it two, Solomon three. Ekanya, uh, you're here first, come here. Yes. Chegegwa uh, four, Terego, Timugil. So let's make a deal. The colleagues who have stood up here are the ones who will speak. Okay? Yes. Because I have people who will come in later and uh, they want to cause confusion. Okay? Mm -hmm. Colleagues, <laughs> and we do summary so that we take other steps. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. 
I want to thank the members of the committee for the good report. However, Right Honorable Speaker, I am still disappointed with the committee because they have given very little money for to this mini to this sector. When you go to when you go to developed countries, they put most of the priorities on tourism. Yes. You go to Rwanda, right honorable speaker, Absolutely. where they have only 25 or 26 gorillas. Mm. And compare Uganda with Rwanda. Uganda, if the minister can give me some information, I don't know the families we have of these gorillas. But more than 29, more than 30, yes. but you compare the money we put in our tourism sector and the money that Rwanda puts in the tourism sector. When you fly Turkish airline that lands in at Chigari International Airport every day at 4 a.m., Every tourist goes to Rwanda. And when this aircraft is going back to Istanbul, it lands in Chigali to pick most of the tourists that had landed to go to, to spend money in Rwanda. So, right honorable speaker, I want to implore government to put more money in tourism. Because if we do not widen our tax base, we shall continue squeezing our traders. We shall continue squeezing people who cannot generate enough revenue for our country. Let us put more money in this sector because tourism alone can sustain the economy of our country. True, true. Then lastly, right honorable speaker, I am happy the minister for... He has disappeared. The Minister for Finance, I thought he was here. He's there. With the He's there. Mm. On Monday, I wanted to even say this when the Prime Minister is here. Right Honourable Speaker, I want to give you information. On Monday, in, in, during the Cabinet meeting that w was held in Entebbe, his I, I did not attend, but the cabinet has a spokesperson who normally briefs the country, maybe unless you don't watch. His Excellency the President gave, not speculation, you are, the President gave to Gume. Now, at first they gave to Gume 37 billion, but now they gave to Gume 37 million US dollars. Who is Tugume? Tugume the wa is an investor who is going to, who has lied to the country that is going to promote our coffee. But, but Honorable Kavanda, for correction purposes, I, I think you know the record of parliament has to be always intact. Listen, we've never appropriated money to a person called Tugume. On the record of parliament. So the, the, the information I want to you give you right now. If you could refer to the entity. It, it is always better. The information I want to give you, right, Honorable Speaker, is because I sit on the Budget Committee. And Tugume, together with Mr. Audrey Kruawog, are the ones who appeared before the Budget Committee in Munyunyu. So I am not speculating. These are the people that we gave money, and the government is adding them more money. The point I'm driving at, right, Honorable Speaker. Procedure. Let's get a point of procedure Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, our rules are categorical and clear. I am a member of the Budget Committee, and the Budget Committee and all committees of Parliament present report here. The indeed procedure are correct that you direct Honorable Kabanda to table to this House a proceeding of the Budget Committee meeting with the said people whom he has alleged so that the record of parliament is put
in the, in the right position. No, no, on, on a vocalic, let's make it easy. Uh, right on, I want on, to make this clear. On, on a vocal, and, uh, Honorable Ek on, on was not a member of the budget committee. He had uh, been smuggled in, but he was not a member when we were sitting in Munyonyo. Uh, but you see, I, I will allow you, Honorable. You see, Honorable colleagues. <laughs> honorable colleagues, just listen. Honorable command and honorable colleagues. Let's not create unnecessary tension. I usually don't like it when colleagues go for each other. Mm. To, to, to the outside world and the media, it's exciting. Okay? Because there is a drama. But then we lose debate. We lose debate. I, uh, um, I remember we never appropriated any money to any person called Tugume or Audrey. Parliament appropriates to institutions. So I think that record has to be put very clear. That's number one. Number two, if cabinet discussed what they discussed and it has not yet come here, then that is anticipation. Rule 8 of our rules of procedure doesn't allow us until it comes here formally. Okay? And then Honorable Kabanda puts those hard questions to people to explain. I, I would request Honorable that... Uh, Huh? Okay, right on. Uh the Uganda Revenue Authority. As you note in the report, most of the departments in the Ministry of Trade are collecting money at source. I wonder, are spending money at source, meaning they are, are not actually hooked onto the Uganda Revenue Authority system. Why has this taken so long? In other MDAs where money is collected by Uganda Revenue Authority. There is noticeable increase of uh, revenues and vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, accountabilities. So I would like uh, whoever is representing finance here to take note that it has been too long that they have not collected this money via uh, Uganda Revenue Authority. The other issue is about advertisement. As uh, Honorable Kabanda alluded, it's not only taxi airlines, but all other airlines. You noticeably see advertisements of Rwanda, gorillas, zebras in the airports and in the plane. I returned on KLM recently and I was amused to see zebras advertised in the plane and also at uh, Amsterdam at the airport and was quite interesting. And indeed, most people leave the, air, the airline at Kigali. So could the Minister of Tourism provide us information? Why this trend? At least I've noticed this trend since 2014. 
And then lastly uh, is the issue of UDC. During COVID, we passed money here as parliament to support local enter entrepreneurship and struggling businesses. But friends and business people who approached me for more clarification or guidelines and I gave them information, they reported back to me that UDC made it so difficult for them to access the money. UDB, U for the record. Yes, UDB made it very difficult for them to access the money. So I would like the minister to give us more information, probably even table a report on who received this money. Thank you very much. Thank you. C can we leave that last point to when we got finance? Because uh, UDB is under finance, uh, not trade. Okay. Now, honorable colleagues, on the, uh, the issue which honorable Kavanda talked about, and honorable Amede has touched, the issue of advertisement. Yes. We don't take advantage of raw hanging fruits. I want to give an example. Recently, in the Magical Kenya Open, where one of our young people managed to shine and his videos went, you know, viral, especially when he was doing a body at hall number 18, when he was supposed to make a cut, the Rugumayo. He was putting on a T-shirt promoting an airline of another country. I talked to him, and he said, but I couldn't get even an air ticket from our own. You know, it's painful. And, and the boy near shed tears in my office. He said, look, my name, my flag was watched globally among people who are billionaires, among people who are tourists of the golf game. But I was showcasing that I'm being supported by another country because my own country couldn't get me a ticket of $1,500. You know, it's, it's so you ask yourself, who really cannot take advantage? How come other countries have eyes for such a low-hanging low fruits? And then for us, we cannot. So, so but luckily enough, uh, immediately I called the uh, MD of Uganda Airlines, and I sent him there. They met. I hope they are working out something, because the boy is going global. And whenever he's playing, he's raising our flag globally. He's putting on that advert alone, watched by the millions who watch it. He should be charging the government of Uganda billions for using his name, saying he's a Ugandan. Yeah, because he's marketing our country. Solomon Cherangat. Thank you. Right, Honorable Speaker. I want to join my colleagues in thanking the committee for the, the report. Right on the speaker, I developed interest in uh, an issue of a uh, human wildlife conflict. I want to thank the committee and the proposals from the ministry that they are going to, they are going to put a chain link across over 80 kilometers of uh, some national parks. However, I don't know the speaker, we have been in this floor of parliament with my colleagues. And we were telling this parliament that the source of conflict in Sabay sub region is because of the people who are displaced from their original homes in the forest. Now that they are going to put a chain link in case they get the money, what happens with these people, right, Honorable Speaker? Because these people are still homeless, they are still suffering. Recently, right on the speaker, there was a very serious conflict between the war rangers and the people. Animals were shot dead. People were shot. But this issue needs to be handled squarely, right on the speaker. I'm really perturbed as to why we have not seen in the report on what we are going to do with these people who have been displaced from their original homes. These people, right honorable speaker, are not intruders in the forest. These people were displaced with the promise that they will be resettled 
But up to now, these people are still in the camps. So I wish for honorable speaker to request the minister to tell us what is the fate of these people. Thank you very much, right honorable speaker. Thank you. Chagegua. Thank you very much, right honorable speaker. I thank the committee for the report and I have a critical passion on that particular sector, especially the one on tourism. Right honorable speaker, when we don't fund research on wildlife, I think we stop being serious even when we start talking about tourism and our destinations because our tourism is made up of mostly wildlife. And so, honorable speaker, knowledge about species, their biology, their ecology, the life history, and guiding appropriate conservation actions are what would come out of the Uganda Wildlife Research and Training Institute. If this institute is specifically to do for us this research, right honorable speaker, we would now be having the right data reliable on our species, on, 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 on the, the, the big five, and also the critical limiting resources on conserving this kind of biodiversity and also assessing the threats to these species. Even it would assist us to give a business case on our conservation. Right Honorable Speaker, if you went to Uganda Wildlife Conservation Education Center, what would we give as worth to the animals that are sitting at your work? If we could give a worth on the animals we present for tourism, this country would long be in the middle income status. Because if we only understood the worth of the animals we present, then, right honorable speaker, we would be way above others in providing the right destination for tourism. His Excellency has called on attention to research and innovations. And I wonder why the Ministry of Tourism does not think that research is very critical when we are really making tourism one of the pillars of this economy. And when tourism of this country is bending onto wildlife conservation. Right Honorable Speaker, I would like to plead with the Honorable Members that that institute in Kasese needs a lot of funding. We have researchers they cannot be deployed because the wage bill is very low. We are losing species every day. We cannot even contain at least their, 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 their genes into our banks because we don't have the research. We don't know even the gene content of the animals we have. And so really this research department in wildlife requires this kind of investment. It has a return on investment. It will give our conservation a business case, and this is the pillar of the economy of this country, right, Honorable Speaker. I therefore plead with you that we get the right financing, appropriate financing for the Uganda Wildlife Research and Training Institute. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mero. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker, I want to applaud the committee for the report. However, right, Honorable Speaker, I had a concern. I have a concern on issues of uh, promotion of tourism. Right, Honorable Speaker, many times we designate uh, tourism attaches in the missions abroad to market our tourism. But the money we are putting into this is not coming out. They do the marketing. But we don't fund, we don't come to support our, uh, our agents to popularize what the marketeers are doing. Recently, we were in Geneva, and uh, our representatives in Geneva had an exhibition that uh, only Kenya and Tanzania were able to send people, and yet it was an opportunity to market our country. And yet Geneva is one of the countries which has a lot of people who spend basically on holidays and tourism. 
Uganda is a potential in this. The other issue, right, Honorable Speaker, I wanted to raise is when I was in the committee, the ministry came up with the issue of um, financing one of the most popularly watched clubs, football clubs, like, uh, like uh, Rwanda is financing uh, uh, Arsenal to market it. We as a committee agreed to that effect. I wanted to know whether this money this time is coming because they had proposed that Manchester United markets for us Uganda as an Explore Uganda project. Is there money for this to come out? Because we expect these people, once they don't own a t-shirt written on Uganda, everybody will be interested. All the supporters of Manchester United will be interested in watching and coming to Uganda to see what are they really promoting. Is the money there? Because Thank Rwanda you. is doing very well with Arsenal visit, Kigali, visit Rwanda. Thank what are we doing in regards to this? Right, Honorable Speaker, the other issue is we are marketing tourism. It is one of our leading earners. What about the transport infrastructure to the national parks? We have had issues when the roads are so rough the tourists come and go back when they are sick. Instead of going back celebrating what they have come to watch here, they go back to their countries when they are sick. Well, how much money are we putting into this infrastructure within the, 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 the places where we are marketing the, the, the tourism from? Right, Honorable Speaker, I beg to submit. Thank you. Honorable Guzuri, then Honorable Tim Gill. Honorable colleagues, uh, I, I can see I can see some members standing up. Mm. When we were starting this session, I picked members and I said I'm stopping on those who are here. So if you know when I was picking members, you are not you are in the corridors or still somewhere. Kind. Of. Mr. Speaker, thank you. I have listened to the chair of the committee, and my observation is that the report is leading this house into approving a police statement which has not satisfied many requirements of the law. Section 13, subsection 15 of the Public Finance Management Act dictates what a ministerial police statement should contain. From the chair's report, I would have expected that we would hear what actions have been taken on recommendations of parliament in relation to the specific ministry but that is silent mr speaker this house has been categorical on a number of issues which have had financial implications which should have been reflected in the in the report for example this house recommended and resolved that uh, the ministry should be able to compensate tobacco farmers in, in West Nile. And, and that provision has not been catered for clearly in, in, in the budget. Two, the, the law says we should be able to look at the procurement plans and the recruitment plans of the various votes. That will help us appreciate how much money we need to vote into the various entities. The committee is silent on those. Neither do we have those attachments in, 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 in that document. Mr. Speaker, we also know that the Minister of Finance has issued indicative planning figures to, to all ministries and, uh, and, and votes. And that should have informed how much money we should propose or put in each of those votes and from the submissions of our uh, uh, of the chair there's a mismatch we, we do not know if all the recommendations they are making are guided or backed by a certificate of financial implication as required in the law so in light of all those it is very very hard to establish one that this Police statement actually will cater for issues of equity, gender, and the required climate integration uh, basis, which, which should have fit in, in a police statement. I therefore invite members 
who are going to vote on this matter to pay keen attention. Otherwise, we are about to rubber stamp uh, a police statement which will not address key issues. For example, in the attachments, I even the asset registers uh, uh, of the various votes is, is missing. And we know there's a lot of waste in these ministries. So we should have examined each of these issues to see what savings we can make from the proposed policy in the subsequent year. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Guzuri. I, I, I think, well, there might be some, some few gaps which are not fully uh, uh, realized or addressed issues. But when you look at the major principles, they are covered. Okay? But that doesn't mean that we should overlook the issues which Honorable Guzuri uh, is raising. And I hope the chair will answer uh, to that because they did a deep analysis. Honorable Isaac, then Honorable Bigger. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I welcome the committee report. One is I do welcome the 27.62 billion which has been offered to Uganda towards the board. And I can see you cited 4 billion which was unfunded, which is meant to promote Uganda's image abroad but actually thought that every marketing that Uganda Tourism Board does is for promoting Uganda's image abroad. So I wonder why this four billion is set aside for only promo promotion of Uganda's image. And secondly, 1.5 uh, billion has been set to help uh, Uganda's uh, consulate in Kenya and Tanzania to promote tourism. But our biggest market is actually in Europe and America. So I would, so I would assume that actually some money be allocated to Uganda Tourism Board, we should go directly to those consulates because they do operate a lot in actually trying to promote Uganda. And then uh, uh, I thank the committee as well for uh, noticing that we, made, uh, we have a risk of budget uh, duplication here, whereby 1.34 million US dollars was not actually included in the ministerial policy statement, which was meant for electric fencing around our national parks. And yet, actually, we had allocated also 500 billion. So thank you for that uh, job well done. But on the fencing, Mr. Speaker, I do feel that uh, this is long overdue. It will actually save us a lot of money in terms of compensation. Uh, where most of these attacks, wildlife attacks on our communities has increased now to over 7,000 cases a year annually. And if most of our national parks are actually fenced, uh, we shall actually be avoiding some of these cases. So I do welcome this money which is going to come in helping avoid. But also we need a clear channel for uh, applicants who are actually requesting for compensation because most of them do not know the way properly how to access this money for compensation and the compensation policy is actually also very slow. Uh, on the issue of NTR, it is actually very sad that uh, so we have, uh, the committee has actually cited that we have some accounting officers who are utilizing the NTR as at source. And yet they're not supposed to be doing that. And yet we have other uh, entities also who act, uh, uh, bring out NTRs, like in the health sectors, and they're not allowed to use any single coin of those NTRs. So why are we having these double uh, policies going on with some other, uh, other entities? And uh, lastly, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we are all aware that uh, passengers accessing West Nile still have to pay while they're accessing the route from uh, Masindi going to Pakwach. That issue has been raised several times here. We know very well that the road from uh, Karuma to Pakwach is still under rehabilitation and it is not ready. As MPs of West Nile, we have raised this on numerous occasions. The late passengers accessing West Nile going through uh, the road from Masindi to Pakwach, be allowed to access it for free as we wait for that. If it's not going to be for free, then at least let us have some concessions. But vehicles have to pay 40000 That is only a small vehicle. So I hope that this matter can be taken up serious so that our members of West Nile accessing uh, Masindi to Pakwach can get concessions instead of paying a lot of money. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Bigaro. Honorable colleagues, let's try to yeah. conclude. Yeah, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. In the same vein, I join my colleagues in applauding the committee for a very good report. Right Honorable Speaker, West Nile basically has been 
on tobacco as a cash crop, as a trade crop. As ministry, as the committee presented uh, what is taking place in the trade sector, they have not had a thought about West Nile. Other areas have coffee, other areas have tea and so forth. But West Nile after tobacco, then what? What can we trade in? This is the only thing that can put money in households and is where we want to go. Two, on, the f on this floor, we did mention that we used to have white rhinos and we have requested severally, can we transport these white rhinos so that they can produce, so that we can have white rhinos, so that we can have something in West Nile. We used to have so many tourists coming for white rhino, I, uh, the white rhinos in West Nile. But this I have not heard. Through you, I request that the white rhinos should be relocated. Also, Terego had written to tourism sector that we... Thank you. Uh, right honorable speaker, through you, we had requested Wati Mountain has a lot of other animals. And we had said that tourism should go and see what else they can add. And this has not been done. Now, if it's not done, how shall we expand on tourism? My season falls uh, National Park. Right honorable speaker, we have not met the standard of most of these national parks. The quality of trees, the quality of what the roads should be is still substandard. The vehicles that are used by the tourists leaves a lot to be desired. I think we need to standardize the type of vehicles that should be used in our tourism sector because it has a lot to do with comfort of the tourists. Lastly, we really need to add money in the tourism sector. My brother is itchy. Honorable Katari Roy, then Honorable Faith Napo. I thank you, Rachel Speaker, for giving this opportunity. I would like to thank the committee chair and the members for the detailed report. Rachel Speaker, uh, the chairperson or the committee noted that there are two acts. One, the Accreditation Services Act, 2021 and the Sugar Act 2020. They are only wondering because it's neither part of the rationalization process nor is it part of the municipal policy statement. Like they asked, I'd like to find out from the minister when they intend to operationalize this or where do they belong. Right on speaker, Honor Mello talked about the infrastructure in this country leading to the tourist centers. Everyone knows that Ginger is one of the serious tourist sites in this nation. But, Rational Speaker, that road is a mess. These days, you leave Kampala at 5, you reach Ginger at 12 a.m. You reach Ginger at 9, you reach Ginger at 9 p.m. You reach Kampala at 5 a.m. That's the situation. Right, Rational Speaker, on adverts, I know we need to carry out lots of adverts telling the world that Uganda has good tourist sites. A few weeks ago, the Private Sector Foundation had the Women's Day Katali in Ginger the third. And I was, I was privileged to meet one of the exhibitors. It was an advertising company. This company has everything you need to know about Uganda in audio and videos. When I asked them why they don't work together with Uganda Airlines and Ministry of Tourism, they said, I think they are not, they are not interested. Maybe the minister should start with that. We could contact the Private Sector Foundation to get the details of these people. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Nakut Faiz. Then Honorable Ekanya. Honorable Tommy Singoma. Honorable Roland Beef. Honorable Barimweso. Then Honorable Nkonyenji, we go to Right, Honorable Speaker. I have two things on which to commend the committee. One of them is showing sources for reallocation. They have done a commendable job. The committee went beyond just recommending that money be added, added from where. I think it's a learning for the rest of the committees. 
that when we move money, we should move from one place to another, showing that. Thank you. The second one on which to commend the committee is the brilliant idea to provide funding for UTB to do international advertising, as the colleagues have already explained it. It is true that projecting a correct and positive image of our country is critical for the tourism industry to grow. Right, Honorable Speaker, I know you're listening. There are two things, two policy areas of concern to me that have come out of this report. One of them is on HUA, Uganda Wildlife Authority. The committee gives clear reason why that HUA gives a justification that HUA should be added more money. But in my view, one of those justifications shouldn't be that HUA is making a lot more money. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be the quantity or, or amount of money we are making and uh, agencies making to determine how much we should give. It should be the need, the, how much is needed for efficiency, how much is needed to get the value we want, rather than how much they are generating. Because if we consider how much they are generating, then Uganda lotteries and gaming board will ask for more, because they also generate. Uganda Revenue Authority will also ask for more, because they generate. So it should not be part of the things we use for discussing in this house. Secondly, on the policy issue, number two, the Export Promotions Board, right, Honorable? How about something called Perseid? How do the two relate? The committee recommends that we add more 20 billion to the Export Promotion Board to do its work. We acknowledge the need to promote exports. But at a time like this one, should we put money on what we know is working or should we put money on a trial and error on an inexistent board? I have a problem with that. I would rather we put the 20 billion on what we see is working other than on a gamble. I submit. Thank you. Uh, honorable colleagues, if there is any statement which I'm um, I'm finding this discussion is difficult to control and put together without losing focus. It's this one. Because the Committee for Tourism, uh, the Ministry for Tourism, is totally different from trade and ENBS. You know, totally. I remember in Parliament here, they used to have I think it was a committee for education, Honorable, can you can remind me and Honorable Bosobo, and show services. And, and, and it was difficult to give serious attention eh, to education. Yeah, when I was checking on the records, it was very difficult to give serious attention to education. I think really we shall need maybe to look at it as a house. Tourism is the engine of this country. To the potential we are seated on. Leave alone this oil you're running around that requires you to invest billions and what. Tourism is more than oil and it's more sustainable. When, when you look at a country, small countries are attracting uh, millions of tourists. When they have nothing, they just have water. They, uh, for us, the few are on water, we are even chasing them off. <laughs> so I think we shall need to look at it in future honorable colleagues. Now we can just before be, be, before I call on you. But this one, as I say, Clark, let's look at it. I'll discuss with the right honorable speaker and the business committee. Okay? In the business committee we look at it seriously, we see whether this committee should remain trade, tourism you look for the relationship and and and, and yeah. On what I'm saying, but I've said I will take to the business committee. We can't conclude anything. If we were to conclude, I would, uh, okay. But since we are, shall take to the business committee, it will again come here, and then you help us. But there is information which I had wanted on Evo Katesh uh, to give us as one, uh, as one of the people who are doing a lot in the tourism sector, and uh, I also wanted to allow Evo Mugori because. 
You know, he does for us a lot of work. Yes. Right, Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. I would like to, first of all, thank you for giving this time for us to discuss tourism. Because, right, Honorable Speaker, I thank the Chair for the presentation and I was listening carefully. From the report of the Minister of Tourism, they indicate that the GDP contribution from tourism has fallen from 7.7% 7 .7 to 4.7% from 2019 to 2022. For me, that should be a very worrying statistic. I want to highlight other things from that report. The second one is that the tourism arrivals from the US, Europe, Kenya in 2023, I mean China in 2023 totaled 67,252. Compare that with Kenya that receives more than 300, just from 300,000 from US and UK. The third extract from that report is that the population of lions in 2019 were 493 and they have dropped. The minister is saying that we should not say the figures, but we are trying to help you. Now, Mr. Mr. Speaker, tourism has got the potential to actually solve the problem of the resource we have been talking about. The biggest problem we have as we look for money is that we do not seem to have the strategy that places this country at the forefront of attracting tourism destination as, as a tourism destination we do not have content we do not have national content that you can actually distribute across the globe to market a country called uganda that's why when you go to some countries they will ask you whether you have gorillas or not yet we have the biggest percentage of gorillas in the in in, in the whole world so where is the strategy that does country level marketing that can attract people to come to Uganda. Number two, right, Honorable Speaker, we have sectors like we have put money in PDM. I want to tell you, colleagues, that if PDM was succeed by 60%, we would have a crisis in this country because we have not planned for the success of PDM. If PDM results in increased egg production in this country, where would you say it? A sector like tourism would be the one that would help us offload increased production out of PDM. If you have 10 million tourists sleeping in Uganda for one night, on the morning of breakfast, you would be sure that you will sell 10 million eggs, 10 million sausages, 10 million tomatoes, and the very chain everybody would benefit. So, right, Honorable Speaker, as we look at money, there are things which we can do. Basic. For example, this morning, right, Honorable Speaker, I received a, a cry from one of the prayers in Queen Elizabeth, where the tourists have checked out because there is no reliable internet connectivity. We passed money here for the project in Netayu, the Minister of ICT is here. You tell us how can we have national parks without reliable internet. When people want to go, take pictures, do live broadcast, and attract other people to come to Uganda. Number two, why can't we have water, electricity, reliable in the, all the national parks? Those ones we can achieve. Number three, why can't we make visa application and arrival in Uganda? Simple. Why should people struggle to apply for a visa and then the system are, are, are struggling and yet we can actually make it simple to attract tourists coming to this country? Finally, right, Honorable Speaker, is about communication by government. Sometimes we are very quick to spread bad news about the country called Uganda. During COVID, you remember, just one case, the Minister of Health would be screaming, Ten cases of COVID have been discovered. Recently, there is something that came from defense. We are the ones alarming the rest of the world from coming here. 
Why can't we have one central communication when you are communicating as a ministry? Understand the implications of your communication on the economy. Because if you give negative news, then you come here and you ask for unfunded priorities, knowing that the sector we, where your negative communication caused a, a, a shortfall in income is the one supposed to fund you. So, right honorable speaker, I think we need to be serious with tourism. We have talked, but we need money in conservation to increase the population of lions, to increase the population of rhinos and all these animals. We need infrastructure, and we need a strategy that places Uganda at the top, wherever you go. And when you are sending ambassadors out there, give them content. You go to a, 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 a neighbor saying, in, in London, where, and you cannot find even a flyer about Uganda. How will they market the country? So there are things we can do, we can talk, but I think government, we need to sit and have a harmonized strategy Thank on promoting tourism so that it can grow and contribute more than 20% to our GDP. I Thank submit. You. Procedure. Procedure? Thank you very much, Reverend Speaker. Uh, the procedure point I'm raising on, Reverend Speaker. And aware that uh, you will tell me that Honorable Bahat is taking notes for the absent ministers. At a time when we are processing ministerial policy statements, talking about budget, talking about the constraints of the economy, talking about the priorities of this country, and none of the ministers of finance is present. And none is present from the, from the office of the Prime Minister in the hierarchy of one, two, three, four, four Prime Ministers. Right, Honorable. Are we proceeding well? Thank you. Now, Honorable Chimosho, you said you are aware. I will tell you that Honorable Bahat is taking notes. So I think we are proceeding well. Because <laughs> even when you were asking, you knew. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, I think at this stage, Honorable colleagues, you see, this is our process now. What we need mainly as sector ministers, because after these statements are going to the budget committee, which will engage with the Minister of Finance again. So uh, le let's, let's proceed. And Office of the Prime Minister is well represented here. Our Honorable Alice Kawoyo is here. Uh, oh, then hon we have a full minister uh, in our senior colleague, Honorable Rokeris. Uh, and he's very alert and attentive. Uh, so we have a very powerful team here representing the Prime Minister. Honorable Kanya. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I want to thank the chairperson of the Committee of Trade and Tourism. Uh, whereas Honorable Nguzili tried to water down the report, uh, Honorable Speaker, I've been here for some time. But the report of this committee and your members and your clerk is top notch. Honorable Speaker, why do I say so? Our rules demand that in the report, the members give a summary of the performance of the sector for previous year. The Honorable Lady presented how there is abuse. Abuse of the resource by the accounting officers. And for that reason, Honorable Speaker, it is this house that clears the names of accounting officer. I hope, Honorable Speaker, your office will take the recommendation of the Honorable Member that the accounting officers who have been named to have abused their offices, leading to corruption and loss of funds, will not be cleared by this house. Colleagues, you are asking for money for tourism, but there is abuse, and the report has made it clear. Secondly, the government of Uganda and the development partner signed a uh, development support policy. The development support policy states and agreed to use national institutions and to avoid duplication. The development partners agreed that we shall have budget support and not of budget support. Under what condition does the Minister of Finance, Secretary of the Treasury, allow of budget support? That's contrary to the commitment for funding and supporting government of Uganda that all resources 
we shall use national institutions to avoid duplication and waste of resources. The Honorable Chairperson of the committee has highlighted that. I've not heard from other person. How can a colleague question that? Honorable lady has presented a very serious matter. Secondly, the issue of not sending money to the consolidated fund has been highlighted. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, my prayer and my request that as we adopt this position, the office of the Speaker and means of finance and all of us will ensure that any accounting officer who has been implicated and not approved. Finally, Toro District is one of the districts that has World War Memorial cemeteries. Honorable Speaker, we moved to the US, we moved to America, we are taken to memorial cemeteries. I request Minister of Tourism and Trade to ensure that the World War Memorial Cemetery of Tororo is developed alongside the first cable car in the entire East and Southern Africa located in Tororo. I beg to support the report. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Honorable Corinne, this is when you highlight your issues. The Honorable Minister for Tourism here, Honorable Martin, visited my constituency uh, in my area in Chianga sub-county, Chianga, Roburunga, and Chijende. We happen to have chimpanzees. We, yes, we happen to have chimpanzees. The minister promised habituation process to start because chimpanzees are gold. I know very many tourists there is a group which Honor Vokatesh had brought. They wanted to do uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth, do chimpanzees, and do mountain gorillas. They had to cancel of one day for the chimpanzees. They said, no, we can't make it. The other side is very far. So the day for chimpanzees is, re is reduced from the itinerary. Now, you have chimpanzees across that track. Honor oh, Minister, you came, you promised that you're going to start soon, soon. <laughs> no. huh? So when Honor Evokanya talks about war memorial, I also have chimpanzees. <laughs> and and uh, are the war memorials going to, the UPDF might come in to help Honor huh? No, I just I'd wanted to give Honor Evokanya and uh, this house very accurate additional information. Toro District does not only have the first and the only known World War Cemetery, but also it was the only recruitment center in the whole of East Africa. So that's why most people who died, they were brought there. Some of you, your great-grandparents, are peacefully resting in Toro. <laughs> so we should highlight this through funding, and then what Honorable Kanya said, Tororo Rock is the only, the highest rock which, without any soil, sedimentary rock, in the whole of East and Central Africa. But the cable car, for tourists, when they come, it takes you one and a half hours climbing up. And uh, so we need, these are the only things. And uh, of course, I support any move to increase. Other people don't even have what they can sell to the world. For us, we have a lot. We, this is more than even oil, I can tell you. To Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, when I will sing, Oma. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, allow me also to join uh, the rest of, my, of our colleagues in thanking the committee uh, for a good report. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, uh, the theme for this year's budget is commercialization of agriculture. But Right Honorable Speaker, uh, using my experience in countries like neighboring Kenya, where the level of commercial agriculture it's slightly higher than ours here. Uh, I realize that there is a very strong, actual fundamental symbiotic relationship between commercial agriculture and a vibrant cooperative movement. The two, you know, uh, uh, reinforce each other. Uh, but looking at the report, and I think I've been hearing properly, 
there isn't much focus on the rejuvenation of the cooperative movement. And this, I think, is a negative retrieval of speaker because we would like to see, we would be happier to see um, efforts being made to resuscitate our Limpi cooperative movement, the primary societies. But only what we hear and what we read in the stories is, is the money being given to cooperative, cooperative unions and, and being misappropriated and eaten left and right. So, right Honorable Speaker, can the Ministry, and I think Honorable Bahati is, is hearing these remarks very well. I can see him looking at me with the... <laughs> can the Ministry really give us an explanation as to why not much emphasis is being put on the revival and rejuvenation of the cooperative unions Thank you. and the cooperative movement at large in this budget. Thank you. Honorable Roland. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. I add my voice to those who have thanked the committee for the good report. Uh, there is a saying, Right Honorable Speaker, that difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. But the difficult roads that we have in Ikigezi are appalling. And yet, we have a national park with gorillas, so many families of uh, mountain gorillas. And the roads are so impassable. We are losing a lot of revenue because of impassable roads. And as such, it is very prudent and very important that the Ministry of Works and other agencies like UNRWA should prioritize these tourism roads. Right, Honorable Speaker, some roads like Mohanga Chisizi Kebisoni and Chisoronkuriungo Mugahinga have been removed from the uh, PIP, Project Implementation Plan, in the next financial year. Instead of starting the roads, those roads have been removed from the PIP. As Kigezi, uh, right honorable speaker, we think we are getting a road deal. First of all, the money that is collected from those mountain gorillas is a lot. But the people of Kigezi are not benefiting from it. All of it comes here in the central, and the roads are bad. Right Honourable Speaker, in addition to that, I would like to add to what Honourable Katesh has said on the internet in the national parks. Recently I was in Kanungu and I travelled all the way to Kasese. There is no internet in the whole of uh, Queen Elizabeth National Park. So when you are a tourist and you cannot access internet, you cannot access, you know, uh, you cannot talk to your people wherever they are in the whole world, it becomes a problem for you to come back to that area to visit that area. Additional right honorable speaker, the Ministry of Tourism is generating a lot of money. Although Katesh was talking about a reduction, but my record is show that uh, in the year 2022 alone, uh, they collected 736 million US dollars uh, up from around 630 million dollars that was collected in 2021. So this tourism sector needs to be supported right honorable speaker we need to enable its functionality we need to ensure that uh, the internet the uh, internet is working the roads tourism roads are done we need to ensure that advertising is top notch because in the end uh, we are going to benefit from it finally right honorable speaker there are low hanging fruits in the tourism sector like sports what people, some people don't understand is that uh, certain uh, sports can promote tourism. I'll give an example. In Kigezi, we have high, high altitude, and we can easily train so many athletes who can compete uh, on the world stage. So if the Ministry of uh, Sports could promote uh, the, 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 that sector, then we could get a lot of money out of that area. I beg to submit right on the speaker. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Mwezo, no, please, Honorable Wandwasi, you are not among the MPs I picked. Yeah. Uh, let me first remind Honorable colleagues, when they finished, when the chair finished presenting, the colleagues who were around stood up and I said they are the only ones who are going to speak. So if you were in the corridor, in the canteen, 
and you have very good points. Unfortunately, you will wait for another day. Ono wari mwezo? Ono wari mwezo? Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I also wish to appreciate the committee for the good work. There has been an increase in uh, counterfeits in the entire country. And this is because uh, UNBS has not been given money for field inspections. For almost the entire year, I haven't seen UNBS do field inspections in the city. And, uh, you know, it's because they also say that they have limited staff, and this has created a menace. Particularly at our borders, there is a limited presence of, uh, of uh, UNBS staff, which creates a problem. So the issue is uh, how much money have we put aside for the field inspection so that we can reduce on the number of uh, counterfeits in the country. That is my question. Then secondly, right honorable speaker, we have, uh, you know, the, the poorest road infrastructure, particularly in the city. I know we shall come to that when, it, when, when we come to physical infrastructure. But we also need to address, because uh, without buses that, uh, you know, move these tourists in the cities, majority of them are not working because of the potholes in the city. So I pray that we consider that, particularly when it comes to good road infrastructure in the city. Thank, Thank you. you. Honorable Kunyi Njimwada, Honorable Faith Kunihira. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, I want to thank the committee for the elaborate report. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, I have three observations. One, the report mentions Uganda Hotel and Tourism Training Institute to, uh, that they are undertaking insider borrowing, uh, spending at source, among others, in total contravention of the Public Finance Management Act. But they fell short of a recommendation. Is it proper you would have said let the IGG or even the police investigate and, and, and ensure that the culprits are actually apprehended and they are brought to account as, as, a, as, as, as a missing recommendation because there is no recommendation to that. M much as it appears you did a thorough job of investigating uh, and establish, especially considering their half-year half performance. Uh, secondly, right honorable speaker and colleagues, on page 32, the committee brings into picture the aspect of compensation. And they specifically report that there is increasing in number of human wildlife conflicts, including destruction of property and lives. Right, right speaker and, and colleagues, this is very important. We are talking about tourism and encouraging people maybe to visit our game parks, among others. But when it comes to the regulations that were, that were uh, issued by the ministry in 2022, the committee has observed only one concern of a compensation of 2%. Uh, right honorable speaker and the colleagues, I want you to bring your attention to the other regulations. When you look at uh, the aspect of proving a claim, these regulations are very unfair. They provide that for you to allege a claim and receive compensation, you must report on the spot that you were attacked. And if it is an animal, you must produce the carcass or any remainder which is impossible in some instances. The upper, and, and without the, the, the regulation proposed to uh, allude to a requirement that you must, it, it shall, must report, which is impossible to most of the victims. And aware that the report is disclosing uh, increase in encounters between wildlife and, 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 and leading to destruction of property and lives, we must equally interrogate this. I, I think the recommendation fell so, uh, short of also mentioning that they must also revise these, these, these regulations. One, to, to, to give a proper timeline within which to report a complaint. Because the regulation provides that you must report on spot 
And if there is any delay, not exceeding one or two days. I, I, I mean, not exceeding one, one or day, which is hard. Secondly, the, the regulations talks, talks about a compensation applicable if you lose a life. And they are restricting it to only 20 million. Honorable speaker and, and colleagues, you cannot uh, purport to restrict a compensation on, on life to just 20 million. And if you, you, you have been disabled, then to 15 million. I, I believe this is, uh, this is in contravention and in, in conflict with the other enabling laws we have in this country. And I beg to move that the recommendation be, uh, be amended uh, and uh, uh, to include a, a thorough revision of the a thorough revision of the Uganda Wildlife Compensation Scheme uh, regulations 2022, so, so that there is enough time offered to victims to report such encounters, and two that the compensation is equally revised to comply with other enabling laws. I beg to submit. Thank you, Honourable Mugore. Then, uh, thank you. Then right Honourable Speaker. Read of opposition, I go to the ministers. Uh, a number of issues have been uh, mentioned, and all, even on compensation just now. And these are regulations that were out just, I think, last year, after push by this parliament. And they are now on test. So what I would do, suggest, even with the recommendations talking about, is first of all the committee to look at it, whether there are those gaps are there. And the attorney general, whether those gaps are there. Because it's just being tested. And at the same time, we are the very people appropriating. If there is a cap on how much somebody should get, should we leave it open? That somebody would get 100 million shillings in compensation or whatever. Then we shall have beaten the, the purpose for which the regulation and the law was put in place. Number two, there was an issue on advertising. I recollect also right on our speaker vividly that Uganda Tourism Board made a research and found that the most watched team was Manchester United, and they had gone into contract. No, Arsenal was taken by Rwanda. You, can, you cannot go Rwanda and Uganda also uses Arsenal. No, there That's is, uh, no, we can just clarify. Yes, but I'm there just There is the most it. watched and the one which makes more noise. Yeah, so, uh, so, <laughs> so, you clarify. And, uh, <laughs> so the clarity was that it, Man U, I'm not a Man U fan, by the way, but it was uh, the most watched, and uh, the most watched, and that's why there was that contract coming in. But I don't know how far they have gone currently. But I suppose also that again there were budget cuts that made this contract do not go. And yet, like you said, right, honourable speaker. The major issue in tourism is advertising, but also our infrastructure development within the tourism network. I suppose, right honorable speaker, that uh, we have sung over this thing. What they are going to advertise is that. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank the members who have made uh, good contributions to this uh, report. In the area of trade, I would start with the area of trade. Mr. Speaker, our policy direction should be geared towards removing the trade barriers in this country. Whether they are barriers related to border restrictions or the environment, including even government exposed restrictions. Those are the f areas where we should focus so that our traders can have some breathing space. Right now, in the entire country, the traders are feeling the heat, in part because the policy environment that government has put in place are not enabling enough for the trade sector to be able to thrive. The minister and the policy statement has also not adequately addressed the issues we have been raising here. I think on the falling prices, I'd expected that to come more clearly. And uh, right honorable, I remember you had directed that in processing the policy statements, the issue of the tea farmers, I think, from uh, the West, 
the issue of the falling maize prices in the entire country and even the oil seeds should be addressed. This has not come really. It was Zombo mainly. Uh, Zombo, yes, wh wherever it is. They have not come very well. The second point I would like to highlight under trade is the composition of our international delegation. I saw in the report they have recommended an allocated money for our delegations to go abroad. Most times, Mr. Speaker, this issue of assembling a group of friends, relatives, and in-laws to go to very high-level delegations, that require knowledge and thinking. Because you are going to engage other countries are going to bring experts, people who know it. Only one statement can uh, be able to even confuse the entire delegation of Uganda. And I have examples that have come to my attention. And the point I'm making is that let us be serious and take, take those opportunities that come. Uh, on the issue of uh, final on trade, I want to emphasize what my colleagues mentioned. We have had resolutions from this parliament that required the Ministry of Trade or government to act upon them, and they have been ignored, including a resolution on the accounting officer of the ministry. It was determined here. We don't know the fate, and I want the minister to comment, because as parliament, our only tool is when we are respected. If we make a resolution and then it is not implemented, and the same entities come here, they want money, it can demotivate even other accounting officers because they don't see uh, us biting enough. On the issue of uh, tourism, I have uh, this comment. In, uh, for, for people who did economics and maybe statistics, there is this subject called uh, econometrics, which is basically uh, using economic theory and when you apply statistics and uh, mathematics to the economic theory, then you come with a model that is able to give you some economic phenomenon. In, in short, you turn the economic theory into viable policy positions. And I, when I listen to the discussion here, our input into the tourism sector does not match the output that we would like to get from there. So without putting in enough resources, without putting in the investments that are required, that should be able to enable tourism, we cannot succeed. Because tourism, I think in my understanding, uh, I will take information from first. Uh, no, oh, honorable, I don't have that time. Okay. Yeah, I don't have time. Okay, let me conclude. Um, tourism uh, is anchored on some economic pillars. You, you need the roads, you need our small air trips, air, air, air trips to be viable. Electricity has been mentioned. Even the health facilities that a tourist feels comfortable that when I get a problem in West Nile or in, in Kigezi, there is a, a health facility that is available to, to, to attend to me. So when you look at all this put together, you find that our investments are not yet enough. I would like to end by mentioning the issue of uh, the image of the country, which has been elaborately covered. I think our image uh, as a country is at stake because we don't have, I think, I believe we've, we even have internal saboteurs, both in government and the other side, who do not even reflect on what they say and where, and at what point to say that. And this is very alarming. Until probably government comes up with a proper guidance on how to communicate certain positions, even when something has happened. Even when something has happened, how do you pass on your information so that when it goes out, it doesn't alarm our tourists? So, Mr. Speaker, I would like to um, end there and uh, appeal to the committee to look at only one issue. One, one day when we were going to West Nile, you were also going for, uh, you attended the burial of the wife to our colleague. We found our own uh, representative in the East African Legislative Assembly, Honorable Veronica, who had a vehicle with a, a EAC number plate. And uh, she's a Ugandan, she's from East Africa, but the rates were different. So they said they gave her the rate as an individual because she's a Ugandan, but they denied her car. Said now this car belonging to East Africa must pay a, a, higher, a higher price. I think that is a small issue 
that probably the Ministry of Tourism can deal with. Let's have something uniform. If I'm a Ugandan and I'm driving a car, probably Lances in Tanzania and the rest, I think the rate that applies to Ugandan vehicles should also automatically apply. It would help. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, sure, sure, sure. I totally agree with you. Because if we are paying the same school fees in universities, paying the same what, why should we? So, um, all of you have five minutes. All of you. You're not going to go issue by issue, issue by issue you'll have another opportunity of interacting with us. Chair, use one minute. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Chair. I want to the thank minister. the members for their comments on the report. Right, Honorable Chair, I want to clarify a few... Right, Honorable Speaker, sorry. I want to clarify a few things. The first comment came from uh, Honorable Kabanda, who complained about the committee allocations to the Ministry of Tourism. I want to inform the Honorable Colleague that the allocations made by the committee is informed by the ministerial policy statement. The ministry is presented to this house, and so that was referred to the committee, sectoral committees, to process. So that is the only source that the committee had in terms of funding to allocate to the different sectors. Second, Honorable Speaker, the comment by Honorable Guzuli, I want to also comment that it was just because of time factor that's why I had to rush over the report and do a summary. Otherwise, if you are to look through, issues of compliance was well addressed by the committee into details. Start from page 5 uh, on gender equity requirements, then also on page uh, 42 and uh, for Ministry of Trade uh, details clearly the issue of compliance. Then, Honorable Speaker, the matter of irregularities in terms of spending of funds, uh, contrary to the Financial Management Act, and the public funds management, right, Honorable Speaker, I stated that very clearly in the report. However, I only highlighted a few areas. But I requested members to read through the report carefully, and we come up with report of the committee on actions taken and also recommendations by the committee. One of them was UCA Limited, where the committee declined approving 3 billion shillings because of failure by the ministry to ensure that the uh, and sh so that they, they complete on um, formalizing the working relationship between them according to the law. So the community declined to give 3 billion shillings to Uganda Cooperative Alliance Limited. That's one among others. Then the recommendation on irregularity of spending at source were clearly highlighted. Among them was the issue of PSST, uh, ensuring uh, disciplinary actions taken. We also highlighted that maybe I request that members read through the report careful and we'll be able to uh, understand uh, and be able to appreciate the position. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Minister, I have to start with tourism. Honorable colleagues, as the Minister comes in the public gallery this afternoon, we have a delegation of women leaders from the Central Uganda Conference, the Seventh day Adventist Church. They've come to visit the SDA Parliamentary Fellowship, chaired by Honorable Tumwesi J. Josephat. Please join me in welcoming them. Oh, there is also a man. So, yeah. What I have here is, uh, yeah, thank you. The man has escorted women. Yeah. For the record, yes. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. And I also want to thank the Chair and the Committee for the report. And uh, I want to thank the members for the contribution and support. And indeed, I don't think that... Uh, Winston Churchill, in his book of uh, 1908, of My African Journey, he didn't refer to Uganda as the power of Africa for nothing. Uh, and I see when you speak about the potential. And Chair, uh, Right Honorable Speaker, I agree with you. There should be a distinction between tourism and trade, so that we are handled uh, separately. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I want to first respond to the issues raised in the report. And the first one is to do with the UHTTI which is a training institute that we have in Jinja, where issues were risen by the committee to do with the, how the school was spending money at source. And I remember the principal then, table de later, I think it's referred to in the report, uh, uh, between him and the PSST, allowing him to spend. But I think the, the, the most important issue is that what happens with, because UHTTI is a training institute, it is an application hotel, a hotel, and where we train our students in, in, in uh, the tourism sector. 
Now, the challenge that UHTTI has compared to the other institutions like the universities, let's say Makere and MOBS, is that most of these universities front load money to these universities to run. Now, in the, in the scenario of UHTTI, they get their money through a submission from the ministry. And sometimes there are delays uh, to do with when the money comes. So that's why sometimes the principal's hands are tied. But yes, the money is drawn off the account and uh, redeposited back when the money comes from the ministry as a submission finally. I think we all agreed that despite the challenge in how well that the money was being picked on and off, that there was no single loss recorded, that the money was always brought back and redeposited. And that's why we asked the committee to guide us going forward. That unless we also run a system like the other university institutions where money is front loaded, then we'll, ha we'll still have challenges running this institution, institution if we're going to f wait for money coming in quarters. And I think that's the challenge. Uh, you, uh, you don't need guidance of the committee. See it as a government. Get the Minister for Tourism, go to the Minister of Finance, and uh, categorize, and you sort it. It's an issue which shouldn't be coming here. Yes, yeah. So, so, so I think that's where the challenge was. Secondly, on the recommendation of the committee to raise the, 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 the money for compensation, the allocation from 2% to 5%, I think that is still an issue of Parliament because this is provided for in the Act. We can't change that by guideline. We have to come back to Parliament and amend the Act. But also the Uganda Life Act provides that in a scenario where the resources are inadequate, that Parliament can allocate money from the consolidated fund to support the 2% that would be going to the, to the to Uganda Life Authority for compensation. But yes, we agree that there are some challenges and delays. Of course, we passed the regulation a bit late. We've so far, I think, uh, given around 900 million as we speak. And we believe that we're going to revise the guidelines to make it more easier for a person to access the age. Of course, also having uh, in mind that, of course, we also have to keep the regulations a bit tight so that the money is not abused. There must be some evidence that indeed there was a damage caused. So, so this is a matter that, that, that we are handling. But still on OWA, Chair, and this matter kept coming up, and I want to thank the committee for recommending that the OWA ceiling be raised. Because if you look at uh, what we are discussing in the ministerial policy statement today, what we've been given as a ministry is $202 billion. But the corrigenda that we got the money that we've been given from finance is 177 billion. And that's why maybe some of the issues are raising out of the committee report. I don't know if they'll be implemented or not, because there's already a reduction on the budget as per the core agenda. Now, if you look at how much Uganda Wildlife Authority, for instance, will be getting, it will be getting maybe around 72 billion Uganda shillings. Chair, UWA has around 3,200 employees. Just uh, Pension, gratuity, and salary alone of all officials will be around 60 billion. So we'll have a balance of around 12 billion to run, operate, feeding costs, and all this. So it will be impossible for this institution to run, managing 10 parks, managing 12 wildlife areas, I mean, over, over 40 protected areas. And this is where we want to request Parliament to support the resolution or the recommendation of the committee. First of all, the money we are talking about is collected by OWA itself. It's not that we are going to get it from the consolidated fund. It's collected by OWA. And we are saying that if you raise this feeling, sorry, this ceiling, so that OWA can be able to operate well, then definitely we'll continue raising more money for the sector. But also, once the ceiling is raised, and we've told finance that because of the shortages in terms of funding, we can also, OWA can also make a contribution to the consolidated fund of, let's say, 15 billion or two, or 20 billion. Of course, our request is that w once that contribution is made, that money still comes to support the other agencies of the ministry. So it's my prayer that if this budget is passed as is, definitely war will not be operational. That, no, uh, hon Honourable Minister, you don't add your safe time. Oh. That's a sign that you've used up your time. Okay, so please conclude. Because you've gone into so much it's as if you're presenting before a committee. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, but I thought I would, I would say that uh, a number of issues have come up, and uh, maybe I'll just speak to, to a few on the issue of uh, advertisement. And, and, and we all agree from what Katish said 
the potential of the sector is enormous. Once we invested money in this sector, definitely we will get the results. And indeed, you will not even compare us to oil. But I mean, still the mandate, yes, this is true, and we've said this, but the mandate is, is, is by you members of parliament. Ours is just uh, presenting what we have and within uh, uh, what we can spend. Uh, right Honourable Speaker, on the issue of, uh, that has been raised by members of parliament, on the access to, from uh, the road between uh, Masindi to Pakwach, yes, I agree that uh, members of parliament, like any other members of the community allowed to pay, are supposed to pay. But this road was initially a tourism road. Different from the road going through Queen Elizabeth in Kasese, because that one you'd go through. But from time immemorial, access to that road, you had to pay a park entry fee. And that road was specifically built for tourism. And that's why there is uh, an opposite access route. And sometimes when there are uh, uh, um, uh, issues with the, with, the, with the main Pakwach Road, we've given you clearance and we've allowed them to go through. But now when you say that we stop the collection and let access to this road like any other road, it becomes a challenge. Th the that, revenues... That was not the issue. The issue was because of her number plate, okay, which was uh, for Ayara, East African community, you charged her a higher figure that she's not a Ugandan. This is, as an individual, you charged her Ugandan, but they are saying the car is not Ugandan. The car belongs to East Africa. <laughs> so yet it should be the same rate. Right, Honorable Speaker, that is an anomaly. The rates for East Africans are the same rates we charge for Ugandans, beat the vehicle, beat the individual. So uh, that is from me. So probably it is something I can, I can revisit. But, but uh, we treat all the East Africans as Ugandans. That's why we have one rate for, 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 for everyone. O on the issue of marketing, right, Honorable Speaker, and I don't want to go into the argument of the budgets and the allocations. I don't want to say how much Rwanda invests. I don't want to say how much Tanzania invests. But trust me, with a 10 billion shilling budget for marketing this destination, trust me, you will not get any serious results compared to the other countries. So, so, so I want... Thank you, Honorable Minister. Minister for Trade. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you. You are assured of our support, Honorable Minister. And thank you, Chair and members, for the issue that you have raised. Export Promotion Board, vis-à-vis -vis the Presidential Initiative on Exports and Industrial Development, these two institutions do work together to achieve the objective of increasing our exports uh, to now, next year, 7 billion. So that is, we are working in harmony. I support the position of the speaker that we should separate the two committees, rather split the committee into two, trade and tourism. Somebody raised the issue of sugar structures. We brought the bill here, honorable colleagues, and you requested us to go and do more consultations uh, we are glad to hear that you need it back and we are ready to bring it back. Uh, Honorable Singoma, on the issue of cooperatives, we have registered now 10,638 cooperatives, primary cooperatives in Uganda, and we are working out a strategy to establish a cooperative bank. We are now at cabinet level, will be coming to inform cabinet, uh, parliament on how far we have gone. I appreciate the committee for creating a separate vote uh, for UDC. Uh, but I want to urge Parliament, again, that creating a vote alone without putting in money will not achieve much. Our colleagues, we have a strategy of value addition. Uh, we have a strategy of import substitution and export promotion. We have agreed that we should increase our GDP from currently 55 billion to 500 billion in the next five years. To achieve this, we must add value to the things that we are producing. And our contribution in, of the industrial sector now stands at 27.4% to the national GDP. And to achieve this value addition and industrialization, we must invest in sectors that actually 
will achieve that objective. And UDC is one of the arms of government that are, can achieve industrialization. We need to process our cocoa in Kasese. We need to process starch in northern Uganda, Irish potatoes in uh, southern Uganda, fruits across the country. We must end the importation of old clothing to Uganda gradually. And to do this, we need resources. Yes, the private sector is moving ahead to, to do a lot of things that we are, we are seeing, but there are sectors that are not very attractive to the private sector, and some of these sectors can be worked out through the investment in UDC. So creation of the vote is important, but putting in money is more important. So I urge the members to, to do that. The leader of, acting leader of opposition, you have raised the issue of removal of trade barriers. Indeed, we are doing that uh, through, the, uh, through the East African community and African continental. Honorable colleagues, please. And African continental. Minister conclude. And African continental free trade area. All are these things that we should do. Uh, on the resolutions of Parliament regarding accounting officers, Mr. Speaker, you are custodians of the resolution. No, that one we shall handle. Oh, yeah, and I think you you'll handle. Finally, on a selfish note, uh, the Honorable Oboso Boss raised an issue of uh, tourism for Toloro, and uh, he he painted the picture that some of the sites in Tororo were the best in East Africa. There is a saying related to the truth of the Bible that the wise men come from the east and settle in the west. I want to reinforce. <laughs> I want to reinforce. I want to reinforce the point that the tourism potential in Chigeza as Honorable Nyomujan said. Lake Munyonyi is the second deepest lake in Africa. When you look at the three mountains of Muhabura, one at the border of Rwanda, one at the border of, East, of DRC, and another one at the border of Uganda, when the blacksmiths are actually the best in the whole of Africa. So, Honorable, or both of us, I support you, and I want to support members who have raised it, these potentials of tourism as one of the key sectors in the economy that can increase our resources in addition to trade and industry. I thank you, uh, honorable colleagues, for this, uh, uh, the issues that you have uh, raised. And we look forward for your support of the sector of trade and industry so that we can grow our economy tenfold as we have set the target. Thank you. I now put the question that the report of the Committee on Tourism, Trade and Industry on the Ministry of Policy Statement and Budget Estimates for the Financial Year 2024-2025 be adopted with the proposed amendments. Those in favor say aye and the content nay. Aye. The ayes have it. Now, uh, honorable colleagues, you can see we have our technical staff from all sides who have been here since the morning can have a time to move out and get a cup of tea. They also need a small break. So we are going to have a headless break uh, for 10 minutes. We come, we resume immediately. 10 minutes are enough for us to be able to come. House suspended for 10 minutes.
UBC Inspiring Uganda Nyati Motion Pictures brings you to Copa Moja Luo segment. Learn about the famous legend of Jipiri and Labongo and how they allure. Acholi, Jonam and Japadola, Jaluo e 